What's going on everybody? Brendan here, Dad Planet, with another What's Sold on eBay video. Killing the end of November and kill it we did. So the reason I'm filming the intro here is because I have my daughter with me, my youngest daughter. It's about two o'clock on a weekday. It's a beautiful day at the end of December uh, in Ohio, but I've created this opportunity as a full-time reseller to be able to take her here at this time. If I was working some corporate soulless, you know, soul-sucking job, I wouldn't have this opportunity. So I'm really speaking to fathers in particular who are considering going full-time. Women too, but you know, men specifically because I am a man. Um, stick with it, stay the course, and if you just wait it out and uh, and tough it out, you can create opportunities for yourself like this too. I wouldn't be able to do it if uh, if I was working and I was stuck. So that said, 15 more bolos, the end of November, the 22nd through the 30th, absolutely killed it. It was a wonderful end to the month, uh, but let's get into the bolos. Okay, so for November 22nd through the 30th, $4,337 in gross sales with net sales just under $3,000. Selling cost at 26%, it's a very, very good number. And my average sales price is insane. So almost $70, way up from uh, the prior time period. This is gonna be anchored by actually a couple of the bolos that you're gonna see in the video coming up here, so that's wonderful. But let's take a look and see what I did for the month. So for the month, I did 11,000, just under 113. Uh, my net sales at around 7.2 and then 30% selling costs, which again is divvied up by 15% shipping costs and then you know around 15% is what my actual fee cost is that I pay eBay. My average sales price for the month, $61, which you know allowed me to ship a lot less. And you have to remember something about these numbers is the highest average hour work week that I worked in the month of November was 25. My lowest was just around 21 and this this uh, past week in December, I only worked 18 hours. So I'm actually doing, I'm only doing part-time hours right now on my eBay store to make the full-time income. So under 25 hours for, as an average for this entire month of November, which is insane. And um, I, what can I say? It's great, it's great numbers and I'm, uh, I'm happy with them. So let's get into, uh, let's get into these 15. All right. So the first one is these Halloween McNugget buddies from McDonald's. They're from 1992. It's a full set and it's pretty hard to come by having these complete. But if you do, like I did, it's an easy $60. The comparables are very steadily at the $60 range. You might be able to ask for more, but I was just sort of in line with what the comparable sales were for a complete set for them. And uh, the buyer is $69.50 all in. They cost me $5.99, came together in a bag at Goodwill. Amazing find, and I remember playing with these. And you remember the buckets that they used to have for Halloween at McDonald's time? Like the, some of them, I think, glow in the dark. They had like the ghost on them. One was white, one was orange. I think they had a green version as well. McDonald's killed it during Halloween time when we were young. So and I don't know what they're what they do uh, this day and age, but um, this was a really nostalgic find for me. So if you find them and you get a complete set, $60 every single time. Okay, so not every pair of Doc Martens is an item you want to be on the lookout for. There are certain styles that are just not good sellers for Doc Martens. So anytime you see like that yellow stitch, don't automatically assume that you've got a home run in your hands. This style, however, is the Melissa style with the chunky, real chunky heel. This is a bolo for sure. The list to sell ratio is incredible. And uh, I, when I'm sending offers, there are certain items that I just, I don't send offers on because I know they will sell for my, my full asking price basically every time. This is not an exception. So this Melissa style, US size eight for women. And uh, I got full price for it at 55 bucks. So 73.34, the buyer is all in. They cost me $4.39 at a Goodwill. And if you find this Melissa style, I think there's a, there's, there might also be a black in addition to the brown color. Either one of them, grab them because you are going to uh, sell it pretty quickly. All right, so this is like hilarious. So, I mean, you know, inflatables, Santa inflatables, and this time of year, all of it really makes sense. But the Minions really sell well. So this is Carl from Despicable Me, and uh, it was nine feet in height, 
And you know, it's like one of those things where you kind of know it when you see it. So I picked this up on Facebook Marketplace for $25 and uh, ended up selling it for full price at 130. So new, they're gonna sell in between 150 and $175. So I thought pricing mine at around $120 made sense because it was pre-owned even though it worked perfect. And uh, you know, it sold, I would say within two or three weeks. So a really good sale, the buyer is $143.97 all in. And that's still a really great return on $25. So marketplace, you know, these will turn up and um, you will also see them in store. I've picked up quite a few inflatables in store. I've, I've seen other resellers finding them too as well. So yeah, even the out of season inflatables, like it doesn't necessarily have to be for Halloween or for Christmas, they sell really well, yeah, especially if it's a good brand, so keep your eye out for them. Okay, so the next item is a vintage Magnus electric organ. Uh, the model is 300. This is also a bona fide bolo. You wanna keep your eyes out for this style. Um, I had mine priced at $50. It did eventually sell. I picked this up at a garage sale for five bucks and uh, the buyer is $75.24 all in. A very, very good list to sell ratio. There are certain like model 300s that might look a little bit different from one another, but that 300 model, a really good seller. And this thing worked fine. Uh, it was like a nostalgic item from the gentleman that I was purchasing it, purchasing it from. It was his garage sale and he was you know, selling off some items that just never, um, never really took off. His, his mother had purchased this for him in hopes that he would like go into music, didn't want to. Um, so just an interesting story, but keep your eye out for this model for sure because it's a good seller. All right, so next is a printer that I found on Facebook Marketplace for $5. It is a Star Model TSP650. Uh, it was easy to test because I found a video on YouTube on kind of how to run a test to see that the printer was working correctly, not having to like actually plug it into a device uh, that you were going to, you know, use it for like a computer or something like that. So I just ran a diagnostic test. It worked great. And um, again, another one that you want to keep an eye out for this model TSP 650, a really good seller, excellent list to sell ratio and a very high dollar amount seller. Sold this one for full price and the buyer is 166.12 all in. Again, cost me Five dollars. Keep your eye out for this one too. It's another bolo. All right, Octonauts. I I'm in like three, four, four hundred dollars in sales right now for Octonauts. I, I picked up a bulk lot for thirty bucks on Marketplace, and this was one of them. I put all the characters together with the Octopod. This is the Shark Adventure Octopod. So it makes uh, sounds and it lights up. And with all of the characters together, I knew you know this would sell pretty quickly at eighty bucks. So I got full price for it. One hundred one twenty nine. The buyer is all in. $30 for the entire lot, but again, I'm $400 and I think I have maybe $200 left of stuff to um, to sell through yet. So it was a major steal for me to find this. And um, I've done a video on Octonauts before and you know, a bolo item that you really want to keep your eye out for. Nothing has changed. I think that video is now over a year old. So try to find Octonauts wherever you can. The little characters, the like small gup cars, the octopods, and uh, even the little like wild wildlife characters that come with some of the sets, all of that stuff sells extremely well. So keep your eyes peeled for Octonauts. Anything Octonauts sells great. All right, we're in full season football swing. Now this, this is a former NFL player, Randall Cunningham. He used to be a quarterback, uh, number 12 for the Philadelphia Eagles. And this is a Mitchell and Ness like throwback style jersey. So I picked this up at a volu was, uh, Volunteers of America and uh, I paid $13 for it and sold it for full price, 60 bucks. And the buyer is seventy six fifty eight all in. Randall Cunningham jerseys are a bolo, so he's a player that you want to keep your eye out for. But uh, in addition to that, a lot of the Mitchell and Ness Randall Cunningham jerseys in different styles are uh, still also a bolo. So keep your eye out for this one here. But anytime you see an NFL jersey, like especially of a, of a, um, a retired player who is still like in really good graces and, you know, really a really popular, like non-polarizing character, they sell, they sell great. So, you know, keep your eye out for all of the jerseys. I actually just sourced a Ben Roethlisberger jersey from when he was at Miami of Ohio. And I have that listed now. So keep your eyes peeled for jerseys. All right, Tamagotchi. So this is a, this is version three a blue model checking comps. I could see that I had a rare one on my hands and uh, I had this priced uh, low. If you source this, if you end up finding this, I think you could get a hundred bucks for it. If I found it again, I think I would list it at 99 and like, you know, let's see where that lands and let's see if I get any offers coming in or anything like that. But this sold within three hours for full price, $80. And um, the buyer is 88.78 all in. Because I found this at the Goodwill bins, 
and they charge by the pound. This cost me, I think, maybe a quarter. So this is like the steel of the century if you're doing it on a, uh, on a cost of goods basis. So um, again, look for this blue style. It's got yellow stars around it. And then the um, buttons that you push are also blue. All of these colors, they vary. There are a bunch of variations of Tamagotchi. And I, this is from 2004. It's not one of the early, early ones, but I mean, the price, the, you know, the proof is in the price pudding right here. So 80 bucks for it. All right. So I love this little witch. I, you know, I had full intentions of selling this in October, but it sold at the end of November. You just, you, you never know, but she was hard to find. And, um, you know, there's a certain rarity and scarcity that comes with the Department 56 witches. So the comparables weren't really great for me to go on. Um, I thought I saw an exact comparable for around what I had it listed at, like 60, uh, around $70. But I ended up taking an offer of $59.49 for this. And the buyer is $85.25 all in. It only cost me $3.99 at a thrift store. So keep your eye out for her style in particular. But anytime you see a Department 56 like witch related item, whether it's a bowl or whether it's something else, you might have a bolo on your hands. So keep your eye out for it. This is probably the second time that this one has sold for around $60. So this style Department 56 witch is clearly now a bolo with market prices having been set. But if you find the other witches that are Department 56 related, look them all up because it looks like um, there's a trend there and it's sold at the end November. So Halloween sells year round. Okay. So Dog's Breath by Tom Everhart. This was a, uh, you know, a sealed puzzle that I found, I think over a year ago. So I've had it for quite a while, but based on the comparables that I did a year ago, I knew that I could get over a hundred dollars for this puzzle sealed. So uh, I ended up taking an offer of $113.99 for it. The buyer is $135.28 all in. It only cost me $3.99. These are the types of sales that are just fantastic, right? I, I, not, it is another reason why I don't adjust my listings very much. I don't adjust my pricing very much. I don't do like end listing and like sell similar to try to juice my items up because my belief is that the amount of money that I want to make on eBay is relative to the amount of listings that I have. I mean, I have enough data from having sold so many items now to know that um, if I want to make more money, I don't need to like tinker with my listings. I just need to list more because everything eventually sells. So this is one of those, uh, you know, items where list it, stick it in a bin, wait till it sells. And what a, what a slam dunk of a, uh, of a sale for sure. So please keep your eye out, even pre-owned for this, for this uh, puzzle from, uh, Peanuts and Tom Everhart for sure, because it's a huge bolo. Okay, there will be no issues with brand new sealed fragrances here. So this is Miss Dior, um, absolutely blooming, 1.7 fluid ounces. And I bought this brand new at a garage sale for $5. It actually took longer than I thought it would, but a sale is a sale is a sale. It does not matter when it when it sells. So full price for this, the buyer is 8010 all in. Uh, I bought a quite a number of items at this garage sale. I think it was on like a Thursday morning, which is rare for my area, uh, maybe three or four months ago. So, hey, whatever. I mean, all of the stuff that I found at that garage sale, I think with the exception of one item that I actually listed later has already sold. And this is one of the uh, like major pieces from it. So hit those garage sales when you're in season and, you know, old school sealed perfumes you know, always look those up because there's big money in the in those fragrances. Okay, so Pottery Barn bookends, you know, is there a market for that? It's, it's, you really, it's a case by case basis. I mean, some of the stuff is probably worth looking up. Some of the stuff you can pass on. This item was like really unique in that I liked it. And I know Pottery Barn kids, there's a market for it but I didn't really see good sold comparable data on this one. This was just a gut instinct purchase for me. So another garage sale find, $10 I paid for it. Um, I had them listed high, but I did eventually take an offer of $55 for them. They are obviously whale bookends. They were brand new in, the, in an open box. And the buyer, you know, already left positive feedback, uh, loved them. And um, they are $78.57 all in. So I'll put comparables up on the screen. There's different variations of Pottery Barn Kids bookends that, you know, sell well. 
Here's another example. So if you happen to see this exact style, go ahead and grab them if the price is right. But um, again, a case by case basis, because I don't sell a ton of like Pottery Barn Kids stuff. And again, bookends, it's like such a it's seemingly small market for an item like that. But themed room, you know, nautical whales, like it, it all makes it all makes sense to somebody and everything like I've said a million times eventually sells. So I don't source a ton of Keurig machines. In fact, I pretty much avoid all of them at this point. And I know that you can probably like, if you're scoring them for five bucks, you could flip them on Marketplace for like $20 all day long. Okay, I've, you know, I've heard that before. It's not something that I'm interested in doing, but Cinnamon Red uh, in, you know, especially with the time period that this sold in made sense to me. And it is a real bolo based on the comparables that I looked up. So I sold this for $51. I had it listed at, I think 60. And the buyer is $78.53 all in. It cost me $6.99. I actually sold this. The buyer got it, claimed that it didn't work, claimed that it was filthy, said that they were going to leave absolute negative feedback. You didn't give me all of the parts. They even wrote me a letter saying how disappointed they were and how terrible this thing was. <laughs> what is wrong with people? Like, really? Um, I responded to them. Uh, when they said that they were missing an item saying, no, that item is right next to this item. It's literally right there in the box. Just pop it in and the machine's going to work. Uh, they were having nothing of it. So I got it back, retested it, relisted it, resold it. And the second buyer is obviously very happy. So I just, I don't know what gets into the minds of some people, like why they go through so such insane lengths to like tell their story. Um, they never did end up leaving the negative feedback. And quite honestly, if they did, I couldn't care any less. Again, you guys have, that have been following me for a long time, like I do not care about feedback, positive, negative, neutral, anything in between. I don't care about it because um, I think my efforts speak for themselves. And this uh, says way more about that buyer than it does about me and how I run my business. So what a weirdo. But anyway, this thing sold for 51 bucks. It's gone. Uh, we'll move on to the next one. Bun Coffee Makers are a bolo. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So anytime you see bun, it's one of those items that I always say is hidden in plain sight, right? They look generic. They're some, in some cases, they're very light and you, um, and a lot of people pass them up. So it's a good bolo for resellers to find because you'll make a ton of money and nobody's really looking for them. This one, however, a totally different story. This was a marketplace purchase for me and a certain amount of risk because I've never sold a um, bean grinder like this big, this heavy, and this industrial. So in my brain, I was, and I paid $125 for it on Marketplace, by the way. I had this listed for $400, and I took an offer of $300. The market is at $400. I'm not sure what possessed me to sell this for $300, but I had it for a little while, like it sat for a couple of months, and I was like, this item is new to me, so I don't know how long I should be waiting or not. But the market, based on comparable sales, as you'll see here in a little bit, are in the 400 range for sure. I took video of this to, to make sure that the buyer knew that it worked properly. Um, and it was not very hard to pack and ship it, you know, take the two top parts off and, you know, just wrap everything in bubble wrap and get it in an extra heavy duty box. But 400 bucks is really where this item is at. So the buyer is three, 69 13 all in they did not pay tax which again is another thing that i want to target like a commercial buyer who doesn't have to pay tax because i charge shipping and ebay charges me a percentage of that sh of that shipping cost uh for fees which is ridiculous so again this is going to a commercial buyer i was thinking along those lines ahead of time and this is a larger item it was like pretty heavy so it might exclude some of you that, that watch me and um, don't like to sell heavier items. But for those of you that are, are willing to do it, this is a $400 item right here that I sold for 300. So keep that in mind, look for them on Marketplace and Craigslist. Sometimes they will turn up at like, re you know, restaurant liquidation auctions and all those things too. So look there. And the last one, this tree was absolutely gorgeous. I have um, one more left in my inventory, a different brand. This one is Peco, uh, seven foot aluminum pom-pom tree from the 50s and 60s. I bought this on Marketplace for $260, but with it came the two color wheels. So I sold the color wheels for $140 and I sold this tree for full price, $600, and the buyer is $668.89 all in after shipping and tax. These trees are absolutely hard to come by. They are delicate. Um, they t Some of them tend to like flake off. The aluminum starts to flake off a little bit. So you kind of have to be careful. These had all of the like little cardboard or paper sleeves that you could slide the branches in, the stems in to protect it during shipping. But I 
I feel like I knew it when I saw it. I actually, I had to guess on the brand and I had to guess on the brand based on the style of the um, the base that it, sit in, that it sat in because I didn't have the original box with it. Um, but once I was able to identify what exactly I had, I knew I could get $600 for it. So some of these trees go up to $3,000 depending on the style, depending on the color. But these two last two sales, a big part of the reason why my average selling price was around $70 for the month, but yeah, 15 more. And I've carried this momentum into December. So we're really still killing it. These 15, these were monsters. All right, another What's Sold on eBay video in the books. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please leave a like if you liked what you saw or consider subscribing if you are not already a subscriber. And just a quick reminder, for a lot of these jobs, we are 100% replaceable in an instant, but at home, you are irreplaceable. Family, friends, more time. That's what this channel is all about, as evidenced by my little trip to the park today at a time that, uh, you know, most people can't do that. So look at that little face. I appreciate you all. Dad Planet signing off.